Did you know that more than 90% of you are not subscribed? Let's fix that. Those are rookie numbers. It's been a while since I've reacted to some music, you know. I've done two videos now, one's covering anime music and another time covering video game music. Now my idea was to then maybe cover like, you know, TV shows or movie music, but copyright is a bitch. So I decided let's just do a part two to video game music and let's just have this be a nice chill experience. I've got a good playlist of stuff here. And I'm just going to break down what I really like about each of these specific themes, maybe some history I have with them, and just my little piece on just what I enjoy about this music. Just in case any of this stuff needs to be edited or filtered for copyright reasons, you can head over to my Patreon to see the unfiltered version and listen to it in all its glory. But let's just get right into this first theme. Last time I started with Shadow of the Colossus music, so I think let's continue with that. In case you're new to the channel, uh, if you've never really seen these music breakdowns that I do, I'm very motionful, or right? like, you know, I, I move a lot listening to music, especially if I really enjoy it. <laughs> Arguably one of Shadow of the Colossus's most iconic themes. You know, I've talked about Opened Way before. This one's one of my favorites. This plays normally whenever you finally, like, figure out the puzzle to defeat a Colossus. If you want to hear more about me talking about Shadow of the Colossus, check out my previous uh, gaming music uh, breakdown. It's the same music from the original game, like, I'm listening to the remastered version, but obviously because of the advent of new high dynamic range audio, it had to be redone, and now it sounds a whole lot better. I think this is when you fight Avion, as you're waiting for him to swoop down. Really good string work. Mmm, I love that part, the change of the chord there. Yeah, and then you go into the sky. Bum, bum, bum. Ooh, this one's a good one. I mean, it's all good, but... The drop of this one's one of my favorites. Oh, there's the intro of the choir. Love that, love that. Enough Shadow of the Colossus, I've covered that a, a whole lot. Not just on this, but in the channel in general. Let's go into some other ones. Oh yeah. I also talked about God of War last time, but this is one I've been listening to more recently. The Battle with Poseidon. 
I like this one specifically that someone made because it actually has like the the translated lyrics. Only plays for the first battle in God of War 3. But I think it's the theme that sticks with me the most, other than Kratos' theme. All oh, this punch coming in here. You first hear this and it's like, oh yeah, Kratos is kicking Poseidon's ass. But like, the lyrics here... Like, you know, it's talking about like, dragging you down to the deep, like you'll suffer at the hands of Poseidon. It's like, it's Poseidon's theme more than Kratos, but... <laughs> he's getting his ass beat during this battle. Boss. <laughs> Yeah, I've sort of been revisiting God of War 3 uh, fairly recently, like uh, watching cutscenes and people playing it, just again, because I do not own a PlayStation of my own. But yeah, man, that game, it sparked my love for God of War, God of War 3, when I first like really was getting into the series. It's just such a huge, epic game. I can see the whole battle with Kratos on top of Gaia, just fighting. I love this section right here. The music of God of War absolutely just adds and builds onto just the epic scale. A lot of these boss fights are Kratos going up against just the gods of Olympus, and it's like you really feel just their scale. That's one thing definitely going into like God of War 2018 and Ragnarok, it's like that scale isn't really there anymore. It's like, you know, you start off the game fighting Poseidon, the god of the sea, and he's just like in this massive form, rivaling the scale of even a, even a titan. And even as you fight Hades, like he's like a massive boss as well. Like, I don't know, just going into the newer games, it's like, while like Baldur and Thor and Magni, Modi, Odin, it's like, they're all cool characters. The scale of God of War going from Greek to Norse, it's like, it's not really there anymore. But even still, like the, the lore and the characters is still very rich going to those games. Oh, I mean, going from the old God of Wars to now the newer age of God of War, this is definitely the theme I think that sticks with me most, other than like, again, like, uh, you know, Hoon Fire. Thor's theme. Kind of has like this essence of, like, a coming storm. Which, again, fitting. God of Thunder. Such a amazing opening boss fight. A little bit of Game of Thrones in there. I love this part. Such strong horns. It's not a very loud choir yet. I like that it's building. Oh 
man. Then it goes into like Kratos a little bit. Oh, I love that. That's definitely my favorite theme from Ragnarok. Now we're gonna go into like some one-offs from like different games. I guess we'll stick on like the the epic nature and we'll do this one. One that I never really heard until recently, just because I'm not too into the franchise, but Battlefield. Specifically Battlefield 4. I've definitely heard a section of this before. Like the bun dun 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 dun. That's Terminator. <laughs> I've only ever played... I did play Battlefield for a little while, but I was mostly a COD kid growing up. But I played a little bit of Battlefield 3, and I think a little bit of Battlefield 4, but that was about it for me. It has, like, that anime, like, music structure a little bit? Here we go. Man, you could play this at a rave and no one would bat an eye. I remember though growing up in like the era when like the Battlefield games were like really coming out. I was still hype for them, but you know, I just, I never really got into them all that much, but the music, that's really good shit. I guess we'll stick on like this military-esque stuff. I know which one I want to end with, but we can go back to Reach for a little bit. This is one, another one I've been listening to recently. I definitely want to do some point soon a replay of the Halo Reach campaign for the channel, which stay tuned for that because that'll probably be coming fairly soon. This plays when uh, you, Emil, and Carter are on the Falcon after just getting Cortana from Halsey. And it's like, we need to get the package to the autumn. It's pretty much like your last goodbye to Carter. Yeah, I've just been thinking a lot about Reach fairly recently, like I've been watching stuff, so I'm definitely going to be playing the campaign again soon, so again, stay tuned for that. Reach is just such a good story, man. Like, you can say whatever you want about the multiplayer. It captures just that feeling of just, like, we're fighting a losing battle. And one of the lines that sticks with me is what Kat says to Carter at one point, is just like, I know we're losing, I want to know if we've lost. And that pretty much sums up the whole, like, Reach battle. They were fighting an uphill battle from the very beginning, it only ever just got steep. A little bit of hopeful triumphants. It's very much just like Carter, and I guess all of the Noble Team just placing their last hope in. Noble Six, but, like, Cortana. Reach. 
Reach has such good music. Absolutely. If you've never played a Halo game before, well, for one, like, do yourself a favor and play them, but Reach, I feel like, is a pretty good place to start. Like, of course, more than anything, I recommend, like, you know, just playing the games as they came out, you know, Combat Evolved and all that. Especially now that the Master Chief collection exists and it's in the remastered form. Here's a fun little one-off one here. Ultra Kill. <laughs> a game I'm tempted to play on the channel, but just everything I see on it, it's like, that game's fucking hard. But at the same time, it goes so hard. <laughs> but I just keep listening to the music every time I get the chance. I could not tell you a thing about the story of Ultra Kill. <laughs> You're a uh, robot camera, whatever that meme is, that's just fighting his way through like the seven circles of hell. <laughs> I recommend the YouTuber Maxor. His videos are very hard to keep up with for the average viewer, but they're very funny. And I think his two videos on Ultra Kill are some of the best I've ever seen. Maybe one day I'll play it for the channel. This one's definitely probably my favorite Ultra Kill uh, soundtrack theme. It definitely gives you that feeling of just like you're going through hell. But your character obviously just doesn't care. I love that. Definitely give Ultra Kill a try if you're into those crazy kind of games. Okay, on a little more of a somber note, <laughs> uh, The Last of Us. Obviously with the advent of like the live action Last of Us, I revisited uh, the story a little bit. Again, I've never played it for myself, never had a PlayStation. I know it's on PC, but I'll play it one day. <laughs> for the channel, maybe. Last of Us, like in terms of being like a game you play for a video i don't know it's kind of better for it to be a game they experience for the first time because now i know like everything about it of course all the emotional scenes the twists the turns the characters so i don't know if i'll ever play it for the channel if ever last of us part three comes out then maybe but as it stands last of us part one i guess is still one of my favorite games ever i know i never covered it just because it's like i've never played it for myself but just as a story it's one that i keep coming back to this one is one of the themes that uh always stuck with me That first just 18 seconds is beautiful. If you have a good ear if, and if you're familiar with Last of Us, the scene that it's most uh, synonymous with is when Ellie kills, I think it's David, right? The cannibal. And then Joel like comes and like grabs her and is like, Ellie, stop. And uh, you just hear this part. I just love that part because it's like so muffled and like you can barely just make out like that it's a guitar. But then right as Joel hugs her, it becomes more clear. Like it's still muffled, but like you can like, you can still hear it. It's like, all right, comfort. It's like that final stage of like the development between the two of them. Well, I mean, you can argue that like, you know, the rampage that Joel goes on at the end of the game is the final like stage of development, but for Joel more than Ellie for that part. But like, don't get me wrong, in The Last of Us show, the way they handled this scene was very good. I still say that's my favorite episode 
which when I first heard The Last of Us show, it was the episode I was looking the most forward to since the very beginning was obviously that whole segment, just because that's also still my favorite segment of the whole game is the Ellie on her own. Like, the show handled it fairly well. I think now that a lot of time has passed, and I guess the hype around The Last of Us show is sort of, you know, not even sort of, I would say it, it's died out until part two happens, which is probably still going to be for a good couple years. I wish that they used this theme for that scene in the show, because I remember they did did play it at one point because I remember hearing it and doing like the lead in order to cap your like ep- I don't remember what scene it was. It was pretty early on because, you know, I have that brain where it's like I hear certain music cues, like even for things that aren't related to whatever I'm listening to at the time. And it like I relate it to other things. So it's like I'm hearing that theme in a different part of the show or the story. And I'm like, that's not supposed to be there. Again, Last of Us Part 1. It's one of the best games of all time. I'm not even just saying that like from a personal standpoint, just as a matter of fact. Now, Part 2, like obviously as the years have gone on, we've sort of just had to accept what has happened again i won't spoil much like if you know you know it robbed us of a lot of what could have been further development i mean it did build off of part one but it could have given us a little more and i think like the infamous scene would have been better if it was at the end of the game instead of at the very beginning. I'm very curious to see how the show handles part two. Again, I made a review of uh, the live action show uh, when it ended a while back. Uh, and then I talked about, it's like, my parents, obviously, like, they never played the games, so they knew nothing about it. So I was able to see it, see people experience the story through a different kind of lens than me, obviously, knowing the game. So I'm very curious going into part two as we get to certain scenes, how they will take it. I'm curious if they'll change anything. Like, at this point, it's a pretty infamous scene so i imagine it's gonna happen the way it's gonna happen a part of me hopes that they do tweak some stuff and at the very least make it feel more cohesive i guess like part two isn't i wouldn't call it a mess of a game it's still pretty amazing like from a gameplay and obviously like graphics and everything perspective just story-wise at this point i've accepted it for what it is i've gone through the mourning process if you were but no matter what, part one will always be an untouchable masterpiece, and the music side of it is no exception. To wrap out this video, I have one theme left. One of my new favorite themes in recent times, I mean, this game isn't recent, it's like seven years old by this point, probably older than that, but I didn't really hear it until recently, just because I'm not too familiar with the franchise as a whole. I mean, I'm more familiar now than I used to be. That is... the main menu theme of Dark Souls 3. And yes, you heard me correctly. As we listen to this, bear in mind that this is, that this is music just for the main menu, not even for at any point in the game. Literally just as you load up and it says like, press any button to continue, you just hear, Like, I heard this fairly recently for the first time, because I, like, saw it in my recommended, and I was like, Dark Souls 3, huh? Let me take a listen. And then I heard it, and I was like, oh my god, where has this been my entire life? <laughs> if you at all dabbled into my Jedi Survivor playthrough, you know, I talked a little bit about, like, you know, at some point, maybe I would like to jump into and try out the, the Dark Souls games. Going all the way from the very beginning, and then going up to, like, Elden Ring. Call it a, a gamer rite of passage. I still maybe want to do that at some point. You know, it would be quite the commitment, because those games are not easy. But it's something that I definitely should experience at some point. Instead of just playing Souls-like games like Fallen Order and Survivor. But this theme, man. just for the loading menu.
Again, I know I'm pausing a lot, sorry, but I don't want to talk over it. The Souls games have always had amazing music through everything, through the Souls games, Demon's Souls, Sekiro, Elden Ring, Bloodborne, all of its music. I've listened to, like, everything by this point. It just captures just the essence of, like, the kind of thing they're trying to tell. Just, like, these epic battles against, like, eldritch horrors, these dark creatures, like, all these just amazing fights and the music to accompany it. It has that, that element of, like, horror, and it's just so beautiful. It's like the only word I can use to describe it. But it's perfect music to get you ready for something that you're about to jump into. But I think this might be my favorite, just Souls theme in general, as we go into this part, man. Here we go. Oh my god. Alright, replay. I'm tearing up a little bit. God, I listen to this theme just to like wake me up in the morning sometimes. Just like, let's get up. Let's face that challenge. I love the top comment and just like a main menu theme has no reason to go this hard. I remember someone saying this is the music the bosses hear when you fight them. I love that. If I ever play Dark Souls and I get to Dark Souls 3, I'm letting that whole track rock, and then right as it gets to the end, then I press play. <laughs> I guess one last thing we'll do. Let's get a little bit of Elden Ring in there. It starts so calm. It makes you feel like you're falling. But like you're just embracing the fall. As much as I was hoping for Ragnarok to win Game of the Year last year, nah, Elden Ring fully deserved it. <laughs> Just everything I've watched and listened to on it, it's like, it is, this is what games need to be, man. Games of this scale. kind of peeking a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but that's fine.
I'll probably make another video like just listening to Soulsborne music just because I keep getting recommended stuff here and it's like, oh, it's so good. But well, that was this video of me once again delving into some amazing video game themes, talking about them, breaking down the music and more or less just pogging while listening to music. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out my other videos that I've made listening to music and stay tuned for many other videos of the like that'll be coming to you soon. So until next time, I'm Lancer. Thanks for watching.